universities all around the world today are based on a European model of universities that comes from the Middle Ages but was developed mostly uh, in the form that we now see it in the 19th century. The fact that these universities around the world are so similar is, we think, to do with the, the deep structure of knowledge that universities uh, are working on and the way they organise their teaching and research and scholarship reflects this. These similarities have been accentuated a lot in the 20th century as a result of globalisation which involves both the movement of knowledge around the world and the movement of academic staff and students. In the, uh, the countries that belong to the OECD, uh, there's now a very common pattern of between 30 and 40 percent of the school leaving population going into higher education. Higher education has both social benefits because uh, a more highly educated population is a benefit to everyone, but also it has very important private benefits for the people who actually undertake education. Monotechnic universities, a university institution focusing on one relatively limited area, uh, that they are uh, very unusual and probably declining in numbers around, around the world. Uh, the, the, the fact that a university deals with a range of knowledge seems to be an important uh, asset that universities want to develop. One late 20th century development has been the development of global rankings or league tables of universities. This has uh, positive effects in that there's relatively objective information now available to students or others, but it's also had negative effects in that uh, some universities uh, appear to focus on their league table ranking and how they can improve it to the exclusion of, of other activities. There are a small number of what are sometimes called apex universities, the one, two or three universities uh, that have uh, such outstanding academic strengths that they, in a sense, set the standard for the rest of the university system. Academic freedom is very often protected by law in different countries, allowing academics, if they behave reasonably, to be able to undertake teaching and research without fear of losing their jobs, for example. Analysts of higher education, uh, in a way, keep hoping that there will be uh, a disruptive development that will completely change the way higher education works. But it never quite seems to happen. And the reason for that, we think, is that what universities, as they currently exist, are really good at doing is bringing people together to study and to learn together. And it's very difficult to find a way of doing that uh, that, that uh, operates differently to the way universities do now.